So good morning again, and today's topic is uh, respiratory system in the insects. As we had a discussion that the respiratory system in insect is a direct respiration. It means the oxygen, the gases should flow directly to the cell systems. When we term it as a direct respiration, it means there should be some kind of pipelines through which the gases are transported to the cell systems. As far as the humans are concerned, it is not the direct respiration. In fact, in humans, the insect blood is the carrier of the oxygen. As far as the insects are concerned, insect hemolymph is not the carrier of the oxygen. It does not contain the hemoglobin. So that is the reason the insects have a wonderful respiratory system that we call them as a tracheal system. Why this oxygen is required? The oxygen is required basically for conversion of this glucose into the energy molecules. For conversion of the glucose into energy molecules. Glucose and oxygen comes together. Glucose is the, which is coming from the digestive system. Oxygen which is coming from the breathing system. And with all these processes called glycolysis, Krebs cycle and electron transport system, the glucose will be converted into energy molecules, which is nothing but ATP, and the byproducts are carbon dioxide and water. And the carbon dioxide has to be shunted out of the body again. And water is again a waste product, but again it will be reabsorbed. So this type of aerobic respiration is very much important to understand. And the respiratory system has a very important role in playing for the supply of oxygen to the cell systems. And also removal of the carbon dioxide from the cellular respiratory system. So the respiratory system has a very important role for the supply of oxygen and also removal of the carbon dioxide. And the respiratory system of the insects is totally separate. And the respiratory system of the insect is a direct respiratory system in which the gases are supplied, the oxygen is supplied directly to the cells. Whereas in humans, so it is going through the nostrils and goes to the lungs where it, get, it gets purified and the oxygen is getting dissolved into the hemolymph and the hemolymph carries the oxygen because of hemoglobin to all the cell systems. So in the humans, the hemolymph, the blood, the blood, the blood is the carrier of the oxygen. It's the carrier of the oxygen. But as far as the insects are concerned, insect blood does not have the hemoglobin. So that is the reason it cannot carry the oxygen. That's how the insects have a wonderful system called tracheal system in which the oxygen is directly procured from the atmosphere and taken into a, some kind of pipeline system and each pipe gets converted into smaller pipes. Each smaller pipe is having a direct connection to the cell. Each small pipe have a direct connection to each and every cell. So that's how the respiratory system happens as far as the insects are concerned. And it's called direct respiratory system. It's called a direct respiration. And the entire, that's what, the tracheal system is nothing but a pipeline system. It has a complex network of tubes. There are a number of pipes. The pipes which takes oxygen from the atmosphere and the bigger pipe, the bigger pipes will be, con will be divided into smaller pipes inside and each smaller pipe will have a direct connection to the cell. And it is a very, very lightweight system. Very, very lightweight system. Here you can see in the left side picture, there are a number of pipes inside. On the right side, you can see very clearly, there's a bigger pipe which takes the air and the bigger pipes gets converted into smaller pipes and each smaller pipe is having connection to directly to the cell body cells. So that's a, a complex network of tubes 
there are umpteen number of tubes inside it means there is a bigger tube the bigger tube gets diverted dilated or distributed into smaller tubes and each smaller tube is having a direct connection to the cell It's having a direct connection to the cell and let us see, see the structure of the tube so let us see the structure of the tube how it looks like suppose if you get into the inside just imagine that you are going inside the cockroach and you are going inside the grasshopper you want to see how this pipeline system and the pipeline system looks like a hose pipe probably you have seen in most of the scooters bikes and cars a some kind of plastic pipe which has got a some kind of steel or uh, iron uh, uh, circles around so that uh, the plastic pipe does not get destroyed so that that's how it looks like that is the reason on the right side i just put up a picture here to make you understand very clearly so this is a complex network of pipes that's called is a tracheal system and the tracheal system is ectodermal in origin when i say ectodermal in origin like we have discussed in the foregut and also hindgut of the mediastinal system which we call them as ectodermal in origin when i say ectodermal in origin mean it should have a cuticle it is just like your exoskeleton exoskeleton like exoskeleton it also have a basement membrane it also have a epidermal cell layer and also have a cuticle it means whenever there is a molting in the insect this skin also gets removed and the new skin is produced and this cuticular lining if you see the cuticular lining here the cuticular lining is like appears like a spiral thickening it is appearing like a spiral thickening and this cuticular lining which is appear like a spiral thickening is called tinidia this tinidia provides support to the trachea when there is no air it should not get collapsed so to stop from the collapse of this trachea in the absence of air this tinidia helps very very important and when there is no tinidia when there is no this cuticle lining it means it is very very soft probably that place can become bulged kind of structure which we can call them as air sacs so when there is no this kind of tinidial a chitinous arrangement cuticular arrangement so it it is a very very soft place so that there is a possibility of bulging there is a possibility of formation of some kind of air sacs yes that's also important and there are certain places where this tinid is absent which becomes a air sac and that place is extremely important for the insect to store the air and conserve the water let us look into the structure of tracheal system and simply speaking the entire tracheal system can be converted as a trachea can be divided as a trachea and tracheoles simple the trachea is the main pipe tracheole is the smaller pipe trachea is the main pipe and tracheole is the smaller pipe and imagine there's a insect and there is a hole on the left side there is a hole on the right side imagine like ears for example in our case like ears every segment they have a ears kinds of things this is a hole through which the gases passes inside and these holes they are always on the lateral sides left side and right side they are located laterally they are the segmental pores and they have a small closing mechanism as well and the air flow is regulated and these lateral holes pores through which the gases enter inside the tracheal system inside the insect are called spiracles 
they have the external openings. They have the external openings, what we call them as a spiracles. So the spiracle, they have the external openings. They are paired, one is on the left side, one is on the right side, and every segment. And they have a closing mechanism as well. And the airflow is regulated with the help of small muscles inside. The spiracles, number of openings may vary from insects to insects. That we will discuss a little later. That is the external opening through which the gases enter inside, through which the gases exit outside. And once the gas moves inside the spiracles, it enters into a very, very bigger pipe. It is a pipe. And that pipe is called trachea. And as we have discussed previously, the trachea is ectodermal in origin. Naturally, it will have a basement membrane, it will have epithelial cells, it also will have a cuticle. And the cuticle, and the cuticle is some kind of spiral arrangement and which gives a strength to the trachea. And this spiral arrangement is called tinidia. And you can see here in this picture, so there's, there's a lining, there's epithelial cells, and there is a lining or intima, and there's a bigger pipe which is called main trachea. The bigger pipes, the bigger pipes are having a chitinous cuticular arrangements, a circular surroundings, which we call them as a tinidia. In some cases, where the tinid is absent in some of these trachea, it becomes bulged, it can be converted as air sacs where the water and air is stored for some time. This main trachea is again divided into smaller tubes, which we call them as a tracheoles. So the tracheoles are the smaller pipes. The tracheoles are the smaller pipes, and these smaller pipes are directly getting connected to the cells. These smaller pipes are directly getting connected to the cells, getting connected to the muscles. So it means the air enters into the spiracles, the air moves through the trachea, trachea, and finally tracheoles, smaller pipes, the tracheoles, and finally, the endings will be getting connected to the cells for the supply of oxygen. It is not directly getting connected, but however, there's a simple mechanism. The tracheoles, the tracheoles, the smaller pipes, end up as a tracheoblast. The tracheoles, the smaller pipes, end up as a tracheoblast. Small cells. So these are the cells which provide an interface between the tracheoles and the muscles, are the cells. So that the oxygen, which is brought from the trachea to the tracheoles, finally is being supplied to the cells. So this is interface. Tracheole is that. This is a small cell. It's a small cell, which is the end part of the tracheoles that cell is having a direct connection to the cells of the other tissues, muscles. So that's how the gases are directly being sent to the individual cell system. Tracheoblast. So there are four important structures we need to understand as far as the generic tracheal system is concerned. One is the spiracles, which is the external opening, then the main pipe, which is called trachea, the main pipe is again divided into smaller pipes, tracheoles. The smaller pipes will end up as a cell that is called tracheoblast, which is having a direct connection to the cell systems for the supply of oxygen. Let us look into the differences between trachea and tracheoles. As we have discussed in the previous slide, the trachea are the bigger and larger tubes bigger and the larger tubes running from the spiracles and opening externally to the body. Whereas the tracheoles, they are arising from the trachea and ending into the tissues. They are the smaller tubes. 
they are the smaller tubes trachea they never have a direct connection to the cell they are the larger pipes but tracheoles they are inter intracellular it means with the help of tracheoblast they have a direct connection to the cell in the trachea we can the larger pipe the tinea the spira the spiral structural cutaneous arrangement is present in the trachea whereas the tinea is absent in tracheoles the smaller pipes as the intima layer is there as far as the trachea is concerned and during at the time of molting the intima layer is always shed along with the old cuticle along with the old exoskeleton tracheoles does not have the intima they have a but that that particular intima layer is always retained it will not undergo molting process there is no process of formation of the new skin and the more the old skin no as far as the tracheoles are concerned the intima layer is very 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 thin negligible and in the trachea the intima layer consists of protein and chitin matrix with the resilient protein we have discussed enough as far as the exoskeleton is concerned what is the advantage of resilient is a protein some kind of elastic nature it means the trachea is elastic it means the trachea is elastic tracheoles the resilient is absent it means tracheole is not elastic if you look into the dorsal ventral if you just cut the insect dorsal ventral leaf you will see not simply the spiracles and trachea and tracheoles actually the larger pipe trachea is having a many number of connections because it has to give supply oxygen to many many organs inside so that's the reason they have a lot of longitudinal trunks just like a pipeline connecting bigger pipelines laterally dorsally ventrally laterally so there are four pipes so the spiracles openings into the trachea again we have a number of connections laterally dorsal dorsally and ventral so the number of trunks bigger pipes is a connective pipes you can imagine inside if you look just cut open so here there's a spiracle this is a spiracular opening this is a spiracular opening and which gets into the trachea and this trachea again connected laterally parallel pipes and also dorsal trunks and ventral trunks it as it requires to give the oxygen connection to each and every cell of each and every part of the body there are umpteen number of connections again inside these we call them as a lateral trunks and dorsal and ventral trunks It's bigger pipes and you can imagine, you can see here the trachea system is there everywhere and it is giving connection to the heart it is giving connection to the gut it is giving connection to the ventral nerve cord what not for every cell and the connections to the wings the connections to the legs everywhere everywhere the gas has gas has to be supplied let us just look into the pass how this how this energy goes actually you see the structure here and you want to know how this air movement happens in the beginning itself we had a discussion that the air enters into the external opening that's nothing but spiracle and that air enters into the trachea and then trachea it enters into the tracheoles and from the tracheoles it enters into the tracheoblast which is the actual interface between the tracheal system and the cell systems here you can see the spiracles will not be open all the time 
if the spiracles are opening all the time there is a serious issue as far as the loss of water is concerned that is the reason the spiracles are having a wonderful system they have a inside walls that we will discuss little later and these walls have a control over the opening and closing so that the water is not lost during the spiracular opening there is no pumping mechanism as far as the air is concerned in humans actually we inhale the air we will inhale but as far as the insects are concerned there is no inhaling mechanism there is no inhaling mechanism simply the gases will diffuse from environment into the trachea and from the trachea to tracheoles it is simple diffusion from environment to trachea trachea to tracheoles is a tube diffusion simply it passes from one place to another place because of some pressure gradient inside the concentration gradient inside and the second part is diffusion through the tissues through the tracheoblast so all these smaller insects very very small insects will depend upon this kind of passive diffusion they don't actually spend a lot of energy as far as the air taking breathing as far as the intake of air is concerned they don't spend but the larger insects yes they spend a lot of energy they have a different processes to take the air into the tracheal system from the environment that is called ventilation system yeah that is required in the larger insects that's definitely required in the larger insects because they have to fly for longer distances lot of muscular activity they have to walk they have to jump they have to see a lot of energy is required and for conversion of glucose into energy molecules like atp a lot of oxygen is required and this kind of passive diffusion will not stop and they have to spend some energy again for taking the gases inside the spiracular system that is called ventilation and that ventilation is always there in all the larger insects so with the help of muscular movement or with the help of abdominal movement so with the help of contraction distract or uh, detraction so expanding and these kind of movements will help in the movement of the air from atmosphere to trachea trachea to tracheoles in a larger quantities in a very very larger quantities so the movement here the movement here is always a passive diffusion always a passive diffusion is a simple concentration gradient from atmosphere to trachea and trachea to tracheoles tracheoles to tracheoblast finally supply of oxygen to the tissues and muscles and cells and that's okay for the smaller insects because it requires less oxygen but in all the large the larger insects because of movements of muscles because of the movements of abdomen the air is brought in from the atmosphere to trachea then the trachea to tracheoles and finally to tracheoblast to supply to the muscles and that mechanism of active diffusion and with the spent of some energy they spend some energy for taking the air and that mechanism is called ventilation so now let us look into the structure of spiracles how the spiracles look like the spiracles we know they are the external opening they are positioned later like laterally and they are actually having some kind of walls a closing and opening mechanism and that walls we call them as atrial walls that's required because they cannot keep the spiracle open all the time for taking the gas gases 
if they keep open they lose a lot of water water is very very precious for the insects that is the reason wherever the system even if you look into the digest system again at the rectal they have a reabsorption of the water cryptonephridial system they have a reabsorption of the water they they try to absorb reabsorb the water they try to converse, conserve the water at every point at every physiological state even at the spiracles if they keep the spiracles open for longer time they lose the water water is very precious that's the reason they have some kind of opening and closing mechanism and also the number of spiracles are usually 10 are usually 10 the spiracles you can see in the second and third thoracic region and in the first to eight abdominal region totally generally 10 the pro thoracic region will not have spiracles you can have a doubt that how the uh, gases are supplied to the head the me the meso thoracic spiracles will take the huge quantities of blood and from there the trachea the trachea tracheals are number of tracheals are supplying all these oxygen to number of hair segments in the eggs and appendages in the egg all the cell bodies in the head if you look into the structure of the spiracle here they have a small ring like sclerite which is actually surrounding the spiracle if you feel that spiracle is a round shaped bowl and on the edge of the round shaped bowl there is a small sclerite that sclerite is a very very hard and that actually protects the system that sclerite is called peritrine as i told you that the number of spiracles are usually 10 one in meso one in metathoracic region and eight in abdominal region so based on the number of functional spiracles imagine that the insects will have spiracles maybe some insects the spiracles may not be functioning may not be opening to means it's not function but the spiracles are always present so based on the number of functional spiracles the insects track the system has divided into two kinds number one is polyneustic poly means many remember so at least in the insects with at least eight functional spiracles eight functional spiracles at least eight functional spiracles out of 10 we call them as a polyneustic system poly means many at least eight so again within the polyneustic system is classified into holoneustic perineustic and hemineustic don't get confused it's very very clear and very very simple holoneustic means holo means full it means 1 plus 1 plus 8 1 one in meso 1 in meta and 8 in abdominal region all are functional spiracles you can just imagine so if they have all functional spiracles what kind of insect it is it means it should be bigger it should be a very active insect because it needs more oxygen so it has to open all the spiracles because it requires lot of oxygen lot of air so it must be a bigger insects it must be a very very active insects like dragon flies grasshoppers and cockroaches so that formula is 1 plus 1 plus 8 So one in mesothoracic, one in metathoracic, and eight in abdominal spiracles. All these one plus one plus eight total ten spiracles are functional. Remember, in all the insect spiracles are present. Remember, in all the insects are spiracles are present, but the spiracles may not be functional. The next category is perineustic. It is one plus zero plus eight. It means meso thoracic spiracle is functional and all the eight abdominal spiracles are functional one is closed not functional metathoracic spiracle is not functional means it is closed 
spherical is present but it's not functional so that, that kind of very neuristic arrangement is there in larvae of lepidoptera hymenoptera and coleoptera and almost, almost all the larvae which are feeding phytophagus which are very active outside almost all the larvae what we see outside they are all very neuristic and the third one is hemineustic hemineustic is 1 plus 0 plus 7 so one mesothoracic spiracle is functional metathoracic spiracle is not functional whereas out of eight only seven abdominal spiracles are functional that is called hemineustic arrangement and the second category is oligoneustic oligo means few oligo means few few means one or two functional spiracles may be present one or two functional spiracles may be present so just remember eight eight functional spiracles are present in almost all the insects which are very very active very very active insects whether it's an adult or larvae external outside they are living in the terrestrial system they are living in active but it should be very very active because they are active they need more energy because they need more energy because they need more oxygen because they need more oxygen and their entire spiracle should be open it's as simple as like this suppose if the insect is uh, parasitic which is living inside of another insect or inside of another animal it does not there is no question of opening the spiracles because outside environment is a internal environment of another animal in that case they should have a develop other other spiracles can be closed but there should be a passes of air into the tracheal system here yeah, that's a different system the second category is oligoneustic where one or two functional spiracles are present so in this again three amphineustic two functional spiracles are present one is in mesothoracic one is in post abdominal segments so the last abdominal segments and this is uh, this is there in the cyclorhap and dipteran larvae which are actually mostly um, they are living inside of uh, uh, fruit they are living inside of uh, uh, inside uh, inside of another animal it can be parasitic as well <coughs> the second category in the oligoneustic is metaneustic which is 0 plus 0 plus 1 it means only one functional spiracle that is one post abdominal last abdominal functional spiracle and the third category is pronustic it means only one in the mesothoracic spiracles are functional whereas all other spiracles are not functional they are present but not functional and the third one is third one is aneustic spiracles are present but they are not functional none of the spiracles are functional you can imagine this kind of situation you can imagine in this kind of situation in the insects which are living inside the water in the insects which are living inside of another animal where there is no direct contact with the atmosphere so they have a different uh, system inside they have a, they, they, they they have a special uh, uh, gill kind of structures which is attached to the spiracles from there the gaseous transfers happens from the atmosphere to the insect the fourth one is hypermeustic this is a very special system some spiracles are disappeared spiracles are not at all present till now we have discussing about the spiracles are present but we classify based on the number of functional spiracles but in case of malophaga and cypinclid which is a sucking insects some of the spiracles are disappeared some spiracles are present and functional and very rarely like uh, japic species there are more than 10 pairs of functional spiracles more than 10 pairs of spiracles present that's a very rare habit 
So it means we try to classify the insects based on the number of functional spiracles. The spiracular system is a very important system as far as the gaseous exchange of is concerned. As we had a discussion in the previous slides, in some of the insects, there are no functional spiracles. Spiracles are present, but it's not functional. But in that case, how the gases goes inside the tracheal system? The gases should go inside the tracheal system so that the oxygen will be supplied to all the blood cells. All the tissues, all the muscles inside. Even if it is endoparasitic also, it should live. It requires energy. But as they are not directly connected to the atmosphere, but there should be some kind of mechanism for the exchange of gases. And that exchange of gases will happen to the gills in some of all these uh, all these insects which are living inside the water or which are parasitic. So they have a, some kind of gills in aquatic larva, they have some kind of external gills. The gills are actually present on, just near the spiracles. So these gills will take the oxygen from the atmosphere with a different system and try to send into the tracheal system, not the, through the spiracular open. And there are four kinds of gills in various insects. One is tracheal gills, which are present in aquatic larva, and the spiracular gills, and the blood gills in some, rectal gills in some. But also remember, in the insects in which the tracheal system is not present, yes, in some insects, the tracheal system is not present completely. In such cases, in such cases, they take the gases through the integument. That's called cutaneous respiration. And another important thing is gaseous plastron. This is very interesting. And this kind of structure is present in all those insects which are living inside the water. Because the oxygen is dissolved in the water, the oxygen which is dissolved in the water should be absorbed by the insects. There should be some kind of mechanism. In the terrestrial insects, there is no issue because the spiracular openings are there. With the help of spiracular opening, they take the gases inside. But in case of aquatic insects, it's a problem. So they have to try, they, they, they should try to absorb the water which is dissolved in the water. They try to absorb the oxygen which is dissolved in the water. So this kind of system is called gaseous plaster. It's very, very simple. On the body, they have a, some kind of very thin film in the entire body. And that thin film is actually taking the gas, gases from the water. And that kind of thin film arrangement is called gaseous plastron. This is a thin layer of gas and that thin layer of gas is also nicely positioned because of some haze on the body which is called hydrofuse haze. So the spiracles which are present just below the plastron layer and the air just enters inside the trachea. So the plastron is over the entire body, which is a thin film of gas. What will happen whenever they come onto the top of the water, then try to catch hold of the oxygen. And they have a thin film, and that's how the oxygen is safely fueled, and that oxygen will enter into the tracheal system. So that's how the nicely oxygen is stored and sent inside the tracheal system with the help of gases, plaster, and all these aquatic insects. Mm -hmm. 
till now we have discussed about why this oxygen is extremely important why the respiration is extremely important and what is the big difference between the respiratory system of the humans and the respiratory system of insects and the structure of the tracheal system including the spiracles the big pipes called trachea the smaller pipes called tracheoles and the last distal cell is called tracheoblast how this tracheoblast provide an interface between the tracheal system and the cell system so how the air is moving how the air is moving from external environment into the trachea trachea to tracheoles tracheal to cells and also we will try to understand the classification of the system based on the number of functional spiracles and also we try to understand the structure of the spiracles and the classification based on the number of the functional spiracles and finally and also under try to make try to understand about other systems of respiration besides the tracheal system in some insects the air enters to the tracheal it's a tetanus exoskeleton in some insects they have a gills so that the air is brought inside the tracheal system with the help of the gills in some insects there is some kind of plastron gas is plastron that's how the most important characteristic feature of as far as the insect respiration is concerned is the direct respiration in which the gas is directly supplied to each an individual cell with the help of complex network of pipes with the help of complex network of pipes this complex network of pipes is nothing but tracheal system a complex network of pipes is nothing but the tracheal system that's it for the day thank you very much and we will meet next time with the nervous system